a lecture hall of the College of Defence Studies of the National Defence University. I'm greeted by Professor Xu Hui, who is commandant of this college. Professor Xu, thank Hi. you for having us. Welcome, Liu Xin. Welcome to our class. Thank you very much. First of all, yeah. tell us a bit about this lecture hall that we have yeah. so many nation, different national flags here. Uh -huh. What's going on here? Uh, this is the class mainly for the English speaking student. We have uh, almost a f uh, 100 students from more than 50 countries. And they will be here every day to have a class and we have lectures given by either famous scholars or you know the high-ranking officials or military mm -hmm. uh, generals mm -hmm. to address them on different issues we commonly concern. Where do they yeah. come from? For instance, how many nationalities uh, there are? Oh, they coming around uh, almost five continents. For instance, we have so many, you know, this is from Singapore, mm -hmm. you know, he's a captain. And, Greece, uh, Greece uh, Brazil, uh, Brazil, and Thailand, Thai, and Philippines we have and the German, Pakistan. So it's really a multicultural you know, uh, class. And the people here, we have a nickname for this course. We call it Mini UN of the Military. Mini UN of so the... So we very much value this diversity and multicultural background. So we encourage students to have a kind of shared learning. So in addition to learn from the professors, guest speakers, we encourage all our students to share mm -hmm. their views. So that's a way of collective learning. What yeah. do you study? What do you talk about? What are the mm. subjects, for instance? Uh, our focus on the topic is, uh, we call it, national security strategy focused course. Mm -hmm. We have several modules like international security environment, and we'll uh, talk about the general situation and different regional security and major challenges, crises timely realistic problems. Mm -hmm. And also we will tell the students you know, how to form a national security strategy, how to make peace. Yes. And military building, army building, defense strategy, and also use of force, something like that. Yeah. Uh, what, is, what, what did you talk about here? For instance, three key variables, okay. rise of China, US yeah. coming back, and yeah. regional disputes. What, what is the this subject This is one here? of the slides for the topic of uh, Asia-Pacific security situation. And these are three key variables. We think that, you know, actually, these, their interactions will shape Asia-Pacific security yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You know, mm -hmm. especially, you know, China's rising was uh, regarded more or less by the, some of the countries as the puzzle of the 21st century, or one of the key variables. Mm -hmm. And no need to mention about the Asia. And the other one is the coming back by the US, you know, after 20 years engagement in the Middle East. And unfortunately in the region, in the boundary areas, you know, between China and the regional countries, and some other countries themselves have a lot of disputes. So these kind of things pro provide a kind of platform for the interaction. So how to strike a balance and how to make sure we can set up a kind of, we call a new type of major power relations with the US, how to deal with those disputes mm -hmm. is really crucial to China, to the region, and also to the world. Right now we're at the uh, MPC and CPPCC sessions. One okay. of the key topic is mm. actually China's military spending, or the increase okay. Okay. of China's military spending. Now some mm. people are saying that uh, the increase, for instance, last year 7.6% is not in mm. line with China's capacity or the development phase mm. of China, and mm. are suggesting that there is a mm. double-digit increase of China's military spending. Right. What is mm. your reaction on that? I, I think personally, I mean, we still need an you know, increase of military expenditures, especially given the reality in the first beginning of the beginning of the 20 years, uh, first 20 years of opening up, uh, military followed the policy of mm -hmm. be patient. So the real expenditure was reduced. So, but later on we find out after the Gulf War and some other incident happened, we, we really find the urgency to increase our military budget to modernize this military. Otherwise we'll be lagged behind too much. There will be a generation gap between Chinese military and other advanced militaries. That would be very dangerous, like it will happen in history in 1840s at that moment. Does, we should avoid that episode happening again. Does China have a target mm. of its military spending as mm. per the percentage of the mm. GDP? We know mm. the United States is 3.3%, right. China right now is 1.5%. Right. A global average is over 2%. 
What is China's target? Yeah, a lot of people argue that China's uh, target of the percentage is too low. Yes, we have the potential to increase to the average of the world, at least 2% or something like that. But we don't have to compete with others, for instance, Americans. Their military budget almost occupies more than one third, one third to half of the global military budget. We don't have to do that. And uh, how much we need to spend is determined by the Chinese national security needs in terms of maintaining our sovereignty in, and the security and development. Mm -hmm. And also given the you know, due contributions to international peace and stability. I think 1.5 is, generally speaking, is okay. Yeah. However, at this moment, the United States is talking about drastically, mm. or the President of the United States is proposing to drastically oh, okay. increase its military spending. Mm -hmm. Is China concerned by mm. that? Okay, uh, how much military spending they will have is determined by Americans and determined by their evaluation of the international security. And they always uh, perceive more threat. And because they are global power, you know, they have, they call it global responsibilities. But different administrations have different uh, attitudes. Uh, but Chinese military expenditure is not necessarily linked with Americans. We're determined by our own situations. Yeah. As the United States talk uh, about increased military spending, people are uh, also saying maybe they would have to reduce their foreign aid. Okay. Um, does China see a bigger role in that regard in mm -hmm. this particular moment? Okay, I think a military aid, a part of the foreign aid of the U.S. government, is a very important policy instrument to maintain their global presence, maintain their partnership and alliance systems. So they have their own rationalities, and whether or not they reduce this part of aid is really debatable. You know, because it's really cheaper than they send troops to fight in the battlefield. Yeah, so I, I, if I give a personal you know, suggestion to the U.S. government, more aid rather than more advanced equipment in the battlefield, because if you aid more, maybe people can talk, can you know, help to improve security and peace of themselves, rather than you send troops mm. over there. And past 20 years, terrible experience of fighting, I think need to be the experience and lessons need to be learned which one is more value added, more effective, fighting or help the others to maintain peace. Is that the reason also why mm. China is the biggest contributor of uh, UN peacekeeping forces? You're right absolutely now? right. I think China, at the very beginning, before 1990, China has a negative view, more or less negative view towards the peacekeeping. We regard that as a kind of conspiracy between US and the Soviet Union the Cold War period. But later on, when we find out it's really have some merits and we enlarged our scale of peacekeeping, and now China become, only past 20 years past, China become the largest troop contributor among the P5s. And the President Xi Jinping and our military has already determined mm -hmm. we will do more in that regard. Mm -hmm. Yes. My mm. last question, um, okay. we know, for instance, American mm. soldiers, I again talk about American soldiers, okay. I know you don't like that, but uh -huh. <laughs> people do naturally make this kind of comparison. American uh. soldiers have a lot of problems, scandals, when they are stationed abroad. Right. How do you make sure that the Chinese peacekeepers will mm. behave themselves as mm. we are seeing more and more of them around mm. the world? You are right. You know the the image of China or the, the the perception, global perception on China, especially the military, is something that is still has a kind of sense of mysterious. You know, so we need to uh, well, more chances to expose the Chinese military to the world, and in terms of peacekeeping and other international activities. Very frankly speaking, this military used to be besieged for a long time. We need to be open more. And, and I think we are on the way there. Yes. And, maybe and the that more, I believe, the more the world know China, Chinese military, the Chinese people and the military will be welcomed in, the, uh, in, in, time, in terms of peacekeeping and cooperation maintain regional peace and stability. So it's really a fitting venue for our interview because we're exactly mm. at a place where we are opening to our international right. counterparts. Yeah, I, I hope this is very important. Most of the students, no matter they are coming from America or from uh, very poor developing countries, even those countries have a good relationship with China, 
their knowledge about the Chinese military is quite limited. Yeah, so okay. they acknowledge it. coming to China and learn from here, learn from each other is a very good way to learn to know this country. Thank you very yeah. much, Professor Xu Hui. Thank you, Liu Xing. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, we've heard the Chinese perspective. So what do the foreign military officers themselves think about the Chinese military and their experience in China? I talked to a few of them. from Cameroon. My name is Nenad Stratenovic. I'm a colonel from Serbian Armed Forces. My name is Blazer Georgievski. I'm from Macedonia. Colonel in the France Cameroon. I come from Burundi. I'm a commander, uh, Dimitris, uh, from uh, Greece. My experience about uh, this institution and the People's Liberation Army in general are qu quite excellent. And I part participated in a lot of exercise in Serbia, but also international exercise with NATO and partnership for peace. I can say that uh, China is very, very good trained, and that is same level, same level, maybe in in some task, maybe uh, high level. Uh, I can see here in China. Uh, here, officers is so friendly. They always like to help us, to explain us. But in Canada, sometimes they like to be. How to say, they have uh, some other obligations. Very uh, professional, professional in his uh, job. The only uh, thing that uh, Chinese Navy can improve is uh, to participate in uh, some operations uh, like a refugee crisis, more active.